All right, man, welcome back to the God Center Men's Recovery Show. I am your host, Tim Holloway, and I am glad to be back at you again. Hey, look, if you're new here, this is a podcast for Christian men inside of recovery who want to live an awesome, spirit-filled life. Uh, if that's you, uh, you're going to find this place home, and I'm glad to, uh, that you found us. So we're going to do a recap real quick. We are talking about going through and weathering the storms and going through difficult circumstances and to really triumph victoriously over those circumstances. So recapping is that uh, when we walk through the waters, through the rivers, and through the flames, now God is a God of walking through, and we go through many difficult situations. We're not promised an easy life. Uh, In fact, we are almost guaranteed, and He set our expectation level accordingly, that there will be difficulties, there will be disappointments, there will be offenses, there will be all of these different things. So, when we walk through the water, rivers, flames, and uh, number two was pits, droughts, and deserts. Uh, Pits are those things that we stumble into, and we find ourselves in the bottom of a hole, and uh, wondering how we got here and uh, we kind of spiral into those through uh, different judgments and opinions and different things that take place inside of our head. Droughts, those are uh, seasons of uh, being thirsty, uh, seasons of going and without, uh, just an overall dryness and lack. And uh, desert, that is a place of just exhaustion and uh, just really uh, being tired. So the Bible says that we will go through the waters, the rivers, the flames, the pits, the droughts, and the deserts. And even uh, number three is that we'll walk through calamity. And that is there are serious circumstances uh, at one point or another inside of our life that we are going to experience and that we're going to walk through it and we're going to triumph victoriously over them. And that is that they're not going to destroy us. So number four, in all of this, understanding that we're going through uh, and that he is not going to snatch us out, we know and understand that he is with us, that he is with us in the storm. Uh, This gives us comfort and encouragement. So when the disciples got into the boat, they knew uh, that they were with Jesus and that God was present with them and that all the difficult situations that they were going to go through, uh, they had his presence there uh, with him. And lastly, uh, this mindset is that we're going to win. Like through all these difficulties, whether we talk about end times, events, and scenarios, and going through these difficult situations, in the end, we know we win. And the reality is, is that if God be for us, who can be against us? And that is, if God is on our side, then we have the creator of the universe uh, <laughs> who, who is on our side. Uh, this reminds me of something I experienced as a young kid that uh, my dad was a uh, big and bad, uh, just, you know, the biggest dude I've seen personally in my life, uh, but just huge, muscles, uh, gangster, uh, all of those things, uh, very intimidating uh, man. Well, I got myself into trouble someday, one day, and uh, uh, there was about eight to ten kids uh, that were coming down with baseball bats and chains and different stuff to really intimidate me. and. Uh, to beat me up and uh, as they walked down the street I could see uh, from a, a long distance that they were coming and um, as they were halfway down the street uh, my dad comes out of the house and he sees the situation and kind of perceives what's going on and uh, he rips off his shirt like the Incredible Hulk and uh, begins to charge uh, these young men and uh, I've never seen anybody run so fast in my life. Uh, but when they seen how big and how bad he was and that he wasn't scared of a bat and chain and whatever, uh, <laughs> they all scattered like cockroaches. And it was a, you know, it was this awesome feeling of knowing who my dad was and that knowing that uh, the, the fearlessness that he had and then of course the, the clout and the credibility of being his son and different stuff like that. But it caused me to live without fear. And even more so with our relationship with God, knowing that He is big and bad and He is awesome and He's powerful in every way and fashion. And uh, He's on our side. Okay? And if He could be for us, who could be against us? I find that to be a very encouraging uh, scenario. So in Luke uh, 8 22, it says this Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples and he said that let us cross over to the other side of the lake and they launched out. 
So we are in our last thing that I really want to talk about what God brings us through. And I want to, I want to talk about it in a little more detail. Um, but it says this. It says, I will bring the third part through the fire. And I will refine them as silver is refined. And I will try them as gold is tried. And they shall call upon my name and I will hear them. And I will say unto them, this is my, my people. And they shall say that the Lord is my God. And so the last one I want to flow into before we change the conversation is that we are meant to go through the fire. And this fire is definitely a refining process. It is to free us from something. To refine means to remove the impurities and the unwanted material. Now, here's the reality. Uh, we all have impurities and we all have unwanted material inside of our life. Uh, in fact, you, you can guarantee that the areas that you're struggling with inside of your frame, family, faith, fitness, and finance, you can guarantee that there is something in there, there's impurities in there, there's unwanted situations that are taking place. Um, but when we talk about this, um, this reality of refining process, it really comes down to the refinement of our heart. And that is this fire is for the establishment of our character. Uh, the Bible says that he will refine them as silver and try them as gold. And uh, what this means is, is if, if you've never seen the analogy before or heard it or watched it on YouTube, I've watched it. But basically with gold, they, they heat it up, they put it in the fire and they skim off the impurities. The impurities rise to the surface and they skim it off, right? And this is the way the impurities work inside silver and inside of gold. That heat must be applied for these impurities to come to the surface. Now the reality is, is that that's one of the purposes for the difficult situations that come into our lives. Now these storms are meant for the purpose and intention of the formation of godly character. And that is our integrity our alignment who we are as a person is really really important so much so that that God allows these difficult situations now he doesn't cause them but he allows them to take place in our in our life and they can be used as refinement and that is when we feel the heat we feel the pressure uh, these things come to the surface and we can begin to see them we can begin to recognize them and we can begin to deal with them now the reality is is that there's not really much that can take place inside of our life uh, that would cause these impurities to come to the surface besides difficult situations because nobody gets major character revelations when everything is peachy keen right uh, when we are on the boat and everything's smooth sailing we don't get that much uh, there's not much radical transformation going on either and that is to say that a lot of the lessons are, are taught to us through these difficult moments. And this is the refinement that begins to take place inside of our lives. Now, I say all that to say this, is that this pruning, this going through the storm, uh, Jesus said it in John, every branch in him uh, that, that doesn't bear fruit, he prunes it so it may bring forth much fruit or more fruit. And so understanding this, that these difficult situations are just polishing, they're just pruning, and that is the impurities are coming to the surface, and it's important for us during these situations to be honest about it. And that is, I'm not going to lie uh, about these difficult situations or these character issues. I'm not going to try to hide them or pretend they don't exist. Um, but when I'm going through the storm, when I'm going through the pain, when I'm going through different uh, trials and temptations and circumstances, they're going to come to the surface. And the best thing that we can do is recognize them, pay attention, and begin to deal with those character issues. Now, I find it to be uh, very beneficial because if we, you know, God brings these things up because um, if they're allowed to grow, and that is if we feed these things, we feed these character issues, we feed the things that are going, they, they grow and they become bigger. Uh, so much so that they can begin to consume us. And we don't understand how big they're actually going to grow. And so when, when it comes to the refinement process, when we recognize these things, these are things so it can get lopped off. And that is that the pruning process can begin to happen so we can begin to be more fruitful. 
And the reality is, is that we want to be like gold, right? We want to be like silver. We want to uh, uh, walk in purity, and we want to uh, be uh, be fruitful, which which really speaks of uh, highly successful and just walking in a powerful relationship with the Spirit of God and all of these different things. We want all these things, not understanding that it is the fire that produces the purity inside of the gold. And it is the pruning that pr produces the fruitfulness and the success inside of his disciples, okay? And so the whole uh, purpose and intention of this is to be fruitful and to begin to develop character, strength, stability, alignment, and all of those things that really cause us to walk in power. Uh, and that's an awesome reality. What many men focus on is charisma. And uh, that is learning how to speak well. Uh, we, are, we are drawn towards charismatic men who, who seem very intelligent, who got a sense of swag to them. And they preach amazingly and they're eloquent and all of these different things. And they have this charisma that, uh, that attracts. And what I'm saying here is that this refinement is uh, to develop character. And character is more than just charisma. Okay. And that character is for to build us into the place where God wants us to stand. There is a state and a location in the future date where it is a post and it is a position. It is a, it is a standing. It is walking in your authority. It's, it's what God wants to accomplish inside of your life. And it's only character that's going to sustain you and maintain you inside of that position. And I say that to say this. Charisma, you can have all the talent inside the world. Uh, you can have all the money inside of the world. You can have all of these different things. You could speak more eloquently and all, you know, you could be the most amazing preacher in the world. But the reality is, is if you don't have character and alignment with God, it's not of any value. And so God wants to build inside of men character systems to sustain us in the place and the location where he wants us to be. Now, God doesn't want us to be um, a firework. And that is, he, we get lit, we get on fire, and it, it, it propels, and it goes, and people look at it, and, and one second, two seconds, it's over, right? And that's what many men have really uh, solidified in their mindset. And that's what charisma is going to get you. It's going to get you this instant, oh, I'm on fire. Whoo, look at me. And just as quick as it goes up, it comes down and, and all these different things. Now, God wants something different for us. And that is that we begin to get on fire and we begin to rise. And each level, we just begin to, our character and our alignment with God begins to sustain us. And each level to where we are going and to what we are becoming and we stand firm in the location that God has for us. That's a powerful, powerful reality. This is what he wants to do for us. So resisting the storms. Resisting the storm is resisting the process. And that is bottom line of surrender is I'm going to have to come to the place where I'm going to trust the process. And that is that I'm going to surrender. I'm going to yield. I'm going to stop chomping at the bit. I'm going to relax. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to relinquish control. And I'm going to begin to trust in the Spirit of God inside of my life. And that is if I'm going to resist uh, the difficult situations, uh, I'm going to resist refinement. And that is when the fire, <laughs> when the fire gets applied, what most men do is, is they say, I hate this. I can't stand this. Woe is me. And they begin to sink down in self-pity and say, man, this is it's really hot in here. Man, my, my life is, is undergoing a series of temptations and trials one after another. And um, it's really, really painful. And I feel like giving up and, and let's call everybody and let's get the violin and let's, you know, look at me, everyone at the bottom of the well. Okay. And it's important to understand that if we don't uh, embrace the situations that come into our life, we are actually resisting the refinement. We are resisting to where, where God wants to take us. 
You see, from point A to point B was inside the boat, was through the storm and all the healings and all the miracles and all the awesome things of being sent out on the other side. Everything that God wanted to do was to take us where he wanted to take us. And that is when we look at the situation and we start to clam up and we start to resist and we start to turn the other direction. We're actually turning away from what we really want. Uh, we just don't understand that the promised land is on the other side of this wilderness and that everything we want is on the other side of this difficulty. So if we resist the storm, we're resisting where God wants to take us. And sometimes that is through the narrow path, the hard way, the difficult situations to get to the other side. So if we're resisting the storm, we're resisting that which is on the other side. If we resist the storm, we are, um, we are forsaking our brothers. And what that means is that we were meant to go through the storm. And that is, is to experience the difficulties and triumph victoriously over them, get to the other side and be of service to our brothers. And that is because they are going to the storm too. We are all allotted these uh, temptations and these trials, and each man is going through his own situation. Now, it would benefit us greatly if the men who have gone through some serious battles, who are battle-born and who are weathered and have experienced the storm, would also help and equip those who are younger, those who are younger in the faith or spiritual maturity or whatever, to equip them with the same resources that they had to get through the storm. Okay, And so if we resist our personal storms, we're actually resisting uh, the very uh, power and the benefit that we have for other people. You can't give, what, give away what you don't have. And that is, is if, if the storm is kicking your butt, um, there is not much for you to help. You're drowning in the storm too, okay? It's important to understand that. So to go through the storm is, is, is to get on a firm footing yourself that you're able to reach down to someone else and pull them up to your level. So if we resist the storm, we're resisting being sent out. You see, the disciples had to go through the storm before they were sent out. And that is, there is a business for us to start. There is a mission. There is a ministry. There's all these things that, that God wants to accomplish through us, and they all come through the storm. And if we resist the storm, we're resisting returning in the power of the Spirit. What happened with Jesus? Jesus. We talked about this already. This is kind of a recap, but uh, he went through the wilderness and he returned in the power of the Spirit because he went through the wilderness, right? He went through the dryness. He went through that storm. Uh, he faced his demons, all of those things. No returning in the power of the Spirit without going through the wilderness. And so if we resist the storms, we resist the difficulties, we're actually resisting that uh, the power of the Spirit to begin to operate inside of our lives. And lastly, if we resist the storm, we're resisting healing. Because the healing that begins to happen inside of us as we go through, and the restoration and the lessons and everything that we, we grasp, it's all part of the healing process. And the same healing that we experience, we give to someone else. Mm. These are powerful realities, brothers. So what keeps us from um, a successful life is really desiring a life that has no challenges. See, the biggest challenge we face is the desire for a life with no challenges. And that is that our natural tendency is to begin to resist difficult situations. And the bottom line is, is that we want a life that is smooth sailing. We want to avoid the difficult situations. And what we don't understand is that when we do that, when we don't embrace the pain and embrace the suck, as they call it in the world today, if we don't embrace the situations <clears throat> that come into our life, we're actually avoiding the path because the, the obstacle is the way. The challenge is the path. And it's only through these situations that we actually become who we want to be. And our natural tendency is to seek comfort and to avoid these things. And what we're avoiding is all the things that I've talked to, uh, talk about. 
and it's almost like a deception because it's masqueraded as something difficult, as something hard. But on the other side, it's it, it, the his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And that is everything we want is on the other side. So the reality is, is that God will give us what we want when we want what he gives. And what that means is we spend too much time resisting uh, certain situations that are beyond our control. And the reality is, is that we don't have, uh, we don't have the right to really resist the things that are beyond our control because we can't control them one way or another. And therefore resistance is futile. Now, resistance is meant for uh, influence and evil and temptation and all these things that want to come inside and consume us. We stand up in resistance to those. But there are certain situations that begin to happen to us that we have no power to change whatsoever. Uh, we had one recently where uh, we had thoroughly expect to make a certain amount of money and then half the people backed out. And then, so I had the expectation of getting uh, $4,000 and then what happened was we ended up getting two, okay? And this is the way we operate in life a lot of times, is that is that we look at situations and we set our expectations, right? And these expectations, of course, are a false hope. We really don't have the right to begin to hope for such things because they are beyond our control. And of course, life happens and it begins to throw a wrench inside of our plan, right? And what often begins to happen is we begin to get discouraged and we lose hope. And we say, you know what, this is not pan out like I wanted it to and my expectations are not being met. When the reality is, is that it's our own fault. And that is that we shouldn't have set those expectations to begin with. And that is the disciples, I'm almost positive. They came off this mountaintop. They got into this boat. They were with Jesus. They thoroughly expected smooth sailing. I can tell they expected smooth sailing because when they got into the middle of the storm, they begin to fall apart. They begin to question, they begin to doubt, they begin to have all these things going on inside of their lives because of their opinions and because of the expectations that they have. So if we begin to understand that these difficult situations, especially more so the ones that we can't do anything about, the only thing that we can do with those is to embrace them and that is, is that there is a lesson in this situation. If there isn't a lesson, then it's just for me to learn determination and grit and to stand tall in difficult situations so I can be someone that I respect and that I admire. And so it has, it has a purpose inside of the storm. Somewhere along the way, we have uh, fallen prey to a prosperity gospel. And that is name it and claim it, blab it and grab it. And that is that you, you visualize it with your mind and it'll manifest inside of your reality. And this is the, the positive uh, hope and expectation gospel that everything is going to pan out according to your will. And the reality is, is that God doesn't operate in that fashion. His uh, core of his existence is not a genie. Now, despite popular opinion that people that say that you can visualize it in your mind and the universe will conform to your will and, and your wishes, you know, is, is they're at your beck and call to, to serve you up uh, uh, whatever you want. And the reality is, is that that's, that's the storm-free life. That is the false expectation. And we don't have any right to think that life or existence is any way like that. But yet we do to our own detriment. And what we do is that we, <laughs> this is sad, but it's like, um, God, I'll love you and I'll serve you if you do what I want. <laughs> and that is that you keep me healthy, you keep my family healthy, uh, you give me enough money and I have safety, security and protection and all of these different things. If you just kind of conform to my wishes, then, you know, I'll love you and I'll serve you. Um, if by chance I'm not up to par in one of those areas, um, then somehow God has failed me because we think 
that he is there somehow to meet all of our expectations. And uh, I really want to smash that because the reality is, is that no matter what, it's never enough. We like to think it's enough, right? Um, but the lust that we have, you know, inside of our nature, um, that's never enough. It'll always want more. And that is that the perfect situation, you could be in the perfect situation. And that is your, your, your perfect job, perfect wife, perfect house, perfect city, perfect whatever, right? And the reality is, is that we will get used to the perfection and we'll begin to long for more. And this is where lust for bigger houses and bigger cars and better jobs and all of these different things come into play because the reality is, is that it is never enough. It is never enough. We somehow believe that we'll be okay when the chaos stops. Uh, we'll somehow be okay if the storm would just stop and then I would be okay. But the reality is, is that we have to have this inner okayness, whatever situation and circumstance that we face. And that is, it is well with my soul. And that is whatever my lot you have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And what that means is that I'm going to be content in whatever state I'm in. I may be on dry land and things may be smooth sailing and everything's going great. I'm not going to get too elated because of that. I'm not going to get too excited. I'm going to maintain my composure and stability and move straight ahead. And the same thing is when the storms begin to happen, I'm not going to lose composure and I'm not going to fall apart because I know and I understand that life is a series of ups and downs. So I'll be okay when the chaos stops is a lie. One thing that is sure to happen, the chaos will never stop and therefore you'll never be okay. Okay. And so we have to learn to be okay inside of the chaos, inside of the chaos. So this concept and idea of wanting more and more and lusting for more and more. And the reality is, is that we always desire <clears throat> what's beyond our reach right? Nobody desires for what is inside of their grasp, right? And nobody really desires for something that they already have. And so this lust and this desire for the perfect life and smooth sailing, it's grasping at the wind and it's, it's, it's always desiring something that is beyond our reach and that we cannot have. And once we obtain that status, whether it's money, whether it's house, whether it's cars or whatever, we'll be inside that situation. And what will begin to happen is we'll begin to long to be out of this situation. And we'll begin to begin to long for more. Uh, if you've experienced a awesome job and you got a raise, um, I think the biggest raise I got was $6,000 uh, for the year. It's not really that much when you think about it, but it's a lot uh, according to the norm. You know, the norm is uh, two thousand, a, a two to three percent raise. I got six to nine percent, right? When the reality was, I was thoroughly excited for that raise. Uh, in fact, I was um, I was uh, asking for it. And I was striving for it and I was hoping for it and had expectations for it and all those different things. And it came into my life. And then, of course, after a year, my finances begin to rise to my means. And all of a sudden, you know, the three, four hundred dollars a month wasn't really that effective. Right. And so this is what begins to happen inside of our lives is once we gain possession of something. Once we begin to have the easy life, the storm-free life, or whatever it is that we want, we, it, it, possession, it, it breeds, uh, it makes us familiar with it. And that is once we have it, we get very accustomed to that which we have, and therefore we begin to long for more. So I say all that to say this, and we'll dive deeper into this conversation. The storm-free life of smooth sailing it's non-eventful. It's not really that exciting. Uh, we get familiar and we get accustomed uh, to the stability. And 
all the things that are familiar inside of those things, we begin to long for more and begin to lust for more. And so it's important to understand that this is the way our desires operate. This is the way uh, the sinful nature operates. So we can begin to understand that these storms, um, they are meant to shake us up. They are meant to refine us, to help our character, to establish us in grit and determination. And they also um, begin to uh, provide um, some veritables <laughs> to our life. If your life was like this, from when you were born to the day that you die, it was just like this. I can guarantee you it's going to be very uneventful and you're not going to have much character you're not going to much have much depth you're not going to have any experiences to draw from and it's just going to be a very mediocre life and so you see brothers the purpose of the storm is really bigger uh, than we might think and we'll continue on this uh, tomorrow i'll see you tomorrow